Good morning, party people. Good morning, Surly Dev and Frag King. I did not get that uh, teapot reference, uh, Surly Dev, until you said it. Um, I remember seeing in yesterday's stream the the uh, HTTP statuses going by, and I thought that was funny. I love that uh, topic too. It's always funny as a as a streamer, like what? How much time do I spend with audience interactions versus trying to get my point across? Um, one of my favorite streamers, uh, Spooky Loops, Spooky Loops plays Dead by Daylight. And it, it, it's funny to see how he tries to balance it too. Like he's playing a game and then he'll also glance over at the chat and he'll take chat stuff while he's gaming. And that guy has like two, three, four thousand people watching on any given stream. So the stream is an absolute zoo. Now, so I try to balance it back and forth too, like, you know, going, you know, how much do I let y'all just chat? Because it's also just fun for y'all to chat with each other versus how much do I go and tackle. Um, <laughs> fairly tough says, do you have a point today? I learned, yeah, I, I don't do very well with like sticking to a specific script. Uh, that is for, uh, for sure. Good morning, D. Sanchez. Uh, default blame acceptor says, do they get the concrete stuff right? Yes, I posted on my TikTok this morning a uh, short video of the backyard they poured concrete in my backyard yesterday uh, to which is a, a big huge step in getting the new sunken living room and uh, bigger patio space uh, set up so huge huge improvement I'm really excited with that one now um, we we have to wait for the concrete to cure for three days and then they start building the TV wall I say they start building, of course, this, this company is, they're called Proficient Patios. They have been anything but proficient. We have a complaint going with the Nevada Contractors Board because they, they work so slowly. It's been one year in three days um, since we signed the contract and paid a big, huge deposit. So it's been really fun to, to finally see it come closer to fruition. <laughs> fruition. It was also funny because they blocked me on Instagram. Um, I uh, had been posting status updates like once a month on Instagram and TikTok. They have an Instagram uh, presence and they've been trying to, you know, do marketing on it. Well, I was tagging them in every one of my updates. Uh, and then I show up in, in searches when people search for proficient patios. They would see my, you know, terribly ongoing project. Their solution to that wasn't to get the project on fast. Faster. Their solution was to block me on Instagram, which I find really funny uh, because then they, uh, when I uh, write about them, I can't tag them directly. It still shows up in searches, but it's just harder to find. All right. So today we're going to do something uh, different. Today we are going, I'm going to show you uh, how to write blog posts with chat GPT. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, Brent, A, I don't write blog posts and B, I don't use chat GPT. Even if you don't, what you're going to find interesting about this is the kinds of material that comes out of ChatGPT when you use blog post writing tools, and it's going to help you recognize right away when somebody is full of poop when somebody is simply using chat GPT to mouth out a bunch of words and they don't really know what's going on behind the scenes. This is going to be important for you as an information consumer, because when you go and Google for stuff, you need to be able to recognize when something was generated with just a crappy text generator, whereas when it was done with a real human beings insight and involvement, I'm going to show you a couple of ways to tell to recognize right off the top that stuff was written with chat GPT. Let's go in and take a look. So what I have here is the WordPress new post interface. When you go and write a brand new post from WordPress, this is what a bunch of us bloggers struggle with is the blank page syndrome where, oh, Nickleton, uh, uh, welcome back. Thank you for uh, uh, subscribing for six months in advance. Absolutely awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, so you, we struggle with this blank page syndrome where we have to come up with a, what the title should be. We try to make it funny and jazzy. Then we try to come up with the content. And of course, it's just a big wall of empty space there. So there's this WordPress plugin called AIOmatic. AIOmatic, and what it'll do is it integrates with all kinds of different like chat GPT style providers. I'll zoom in a little on there and then in the instant replays, I'll also put a link to that tool. It's like 50 bucks ballpark. So what that tool does is it links to your chat GPT account. 
me personally, I'm using Azure OpenAI AI because it's really easy to get started with. Uh, if you have a Microsoft Azure account, you can provision chat GPT for yourself in a matter of seconds. It's really easy through the Azure portal. Once you provision it, you get keys so that you can then go call your private instance of ChatGPT up in the cloud. Um, and then you pay by the requests that you make. It's pennies. It's not like it's a, a financially significant thing when you're doing stuff like writing blog posts. And that plugin, it has a bunch of other features. So it'll do things like bulk AI post generation. You can give it a bunch of title ideas, then it'll go generate new titles and generate the contents for you. Where this would be useful is, let's say you want to write an entire book's worth of content, you could lay out all your section titles and then chat this tool plus chat GPT will go write all the content for you. There's also a chat bot inside here. There's a featured post image creation. It'll use stable diffusion uh, or what's the one from Google? I always forget the name. Do Dolly? Dolly? Uh, D, I can't remember. It starts with the D, I think. Uh, I use stable diffusion, but the, the, the will generate custom uh, uh, st uh, artificial intelligence images for you to use in your posts as well. I'm just going to do single post creator for now. And Dally, Dally is OpenAI. That's who it was. I was trying to remember who that was. Now, uh, one of the things that you get to choose here is there's some AI specific settings, how much you want to spend at max, how literal or creative you want it to be, and which model you want to use. I'm going to use chat GPT, just because that was my, per my uh, personal favorite so far. So I'm going to use chat GPT, there are other options in here, depending on what you provision inside of Azure AI. But now here's where the fun stuff starts. And I'm going to move this around just a little bit, hide the chat here for just a second so that you can see at the top right here, here's where the fun starts. So what's the topic of the blog post that we want to generate? And I will let y'all pick over in chat. Give me an idea for a SQL Server blog post that you might want to write. And I'll move this around a little bit on the screen so that we can see it a little easier even when the chat is on. We'll turn chat back on there. Um, so give me an idea of what you might want to create a blog post on, a SQL Server blog post, while I have a, a sip of my tasty beverage. <laughs> oh boy. Mm. We're going to do this. We're going to take this. We're going to take <laughs> uh, SQL uh, Surly Dev. Oh, D. Sanchez, that's another great one. OK, we'll use that one here in a second. Um, oh, longest standing bugs. These are all interesting. You can tell that y'all are my target audience because you come up with these kinds of sarcastic things. Now, we're going to take Frag Kings first because it exposes an interesting problem in chat GPT. Frag King says, why most new, oh, re, oh, Ristoken, we'll totally take that one too as well. Um, uh, so Frag King says, why most new SQL Server features suck. Here's the, pro the challenge with ChatGPT for that. See, ChatGPT stopped training at around a certain point. At around a certain point worth of source data, they didn't add any more new data to it for GPT 3.5. Newer versions of the model are trained with newer information. And Microsoft, OpenAI, Google, everybody who's doing AI work tries to figure out how they can keep their AI models up to date. So it's going to be interesting to see when we say new SQL Server versions, let's find out what it thinks a new version is, because it may not have SQL Server 2022 in there. Let's go find out. So let's say over here under the topic, why most new SQL Server features suck. And if I hit generate title, it'll go through and uh, give me, ooh, that's not a bad title, the downside of SQL Server upgrades. And I love how that it's not really that close to what the original idea was, but it will probably get us there. Now, if Frag King says, so you can't use a browser plugin with this WordPress plugin. You could. I just like using this one, and you'll see why as we start to get deeper into this. 
So this one, when we said why most new SQL Server versions suck, it says the downside of SQL Server upgrades. How many sections do we want our blog to have? Let's say four and generate sections. Now it's going to go take that title and it'll go over to uh, OpenAI or Azure OpenAI and give us that. Now you notice that this is built based off of the title, so it's not now as relevant as what our original question was. It's going <coughs> to, excuse me, this content doesn't really match as well with what Frag King wanted. So I'm going to change what the title is. I'm going to say, why most new SQL Server features suck and then generate the sections again. And let's see what comes back this time. So before it was talking a lot about upgrades. Now we've got something totally different. Look at that. That's kind of awesome. Why new features are often overrated, how they fail to deliver on their promises, why they break uh, applications, and why not may not be worth the investment. OK, so now we've got our sections. Now let's generate the content of the blog. I'm going to go click Generate Content. Now, what it makes it seem like it's going to do is three paragraphs for every one of those four bullet points. In my experience, that's not usually the case. It's hit or miss. Sometimes it's only just one paragraph on each individual uh, uh, title or section title. This can also take a minute or two, depending on how many we generated and how much complexity there is in that. So this is pretty slick. We get an intro paragraph. Let's come down a little bit further. We get an intro paragraph. And I'm going to zoom, make this a little bit different size so we can zoom in on it just a little bit better. And well, let's, let's uh, make it even just a little bit narrower than that so that y'all can see it. And I'll let y'all zoom in and uh, read that for a second. <laughs> Microsoft is master of marketing. OK, so let's go down to so the hype train. I know, <laughs> Frank King caught that too. Uh, let's go down a little bit further inside here. And woof, this is often due to a lack of attention to detail. So there's a lot of general talk inside here. But there's nothing with specific features. There's nothing in here that gets really specific and says, for example, a problem with parameter sensitive plan optimization is that it breaks query store. So for the last four cumulative updates, we've had this problem. Uh, they don't have anything in here about how query store, when it came out, would cause databases not to start. The complexity of always on availability groups, like any features, it's all just like general problems. OK, so we could get it to be more specific if we get more specific up here in our prompting. But this is just, just kind of a general word salad. OK, here's your first sign. Um, here's your first sign that you're reading something from ChatGPT. It uses a lot of l vague, uh, businessy sounding wording. Check your doctor if ChatGPT is right for you. Uses a lot of vague, businessy wording, but doesn't really actually come out and say anything specific. It doesn't use examples. It doesn't generate images in the blog posts. And it doesn't generate code samples. It doesn't tell real world stories. When I did this, I had this problem, and here's why. Are those things impossible to get with ChatGPT? Not at all. You just have to ask for them. So let's try getting a little bit more specific with our blog post. Instead of saying why most SQL Server features suck, and then we had those four uh, 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 section titles, let's go get our section titles and say uh, three, we'll say, three real times that SQL Server 2016 broke my application. Then we'll also say, um, my story of how a SQL Server change uh, caused an outage. 
or we'll say a SQL Server upgrade caused an outage. So we've changed a couple things inside there, and I'm gonna I'm gonna delete the first couple sections because we really don't need to regenerate those. We're really just interested in the uh, content of these new changed titles. Let's go take a look at what uh, SQL Server or what ChatGPT uh, comes up with for those two prompts. Here's the two prompts, just as a reminder, so you can see them in a little more closely. And then when it comes back, it's working. There it goes. So let's come back and see what it says. What did he actually come up with? Oh, oh man, this is really cool. So three real times that SQL Server 2016 broke my application. When I upgraded to the new version, I realized these benefits came at a price, compatibility issues. First and foremost, the new string split caused my queries to fail. It bro uh, broke my several of my stored procedures that relied on the old method of string splitting. Is that theoretically possible? Yes, but you would have had to have changed your code to point to the new version of string split. If you change your code and point at the new version of string split, then I could see it causing problems. Otherwise, it would have been you to just do a crappy version of testing. Oh, ho, ho, okay. okay. That's nice. Secondly, the query store, a new feature that prom pr promised a performance query, tune performance query optimization caused a noticeable slowdown. That's a true possibility. New JSON functionality proved to be more of a headache than a helpful feature. I found it more caused more complexity and caused other parts of my code to break. So these are still kind of vague and they're not, they don't really show like examples or anything. Uh, but I like that at least it put in something vaguely resembling a real world story. Let's try the next one. My story of how a SQL Server upgrade caused an outage. The new security settings forced us to create new logins and users for each database. B.S. That has never been true. It's never even been close to true. In fact, one of the things that I utterly adore about SQL Server is the reverse compatibility is amazing. It, you'd never have been had to create new users and logins. That's just ridiculous. The upgrade process took longer than expected and our server pro ended up being down. I can see that. I can totally see that. Even after the upgrade was complete, we found some of our stored procedures were no longer working due to compatibility issues. I don't believe that for an instant. That doesn't make any sense either. So again here, it's just kind of word salad, but it, you, it would sound like it was believable, but it's just not really uh, accurate there. Uh, Shane says query store is great, just have to filter out all the queries. So Shane's actually writing his chat here with GPT, because Shane is incorrect too. When query store came out 2016, 2017, 2019, there were all these performance problems, especially with people with unparameterized queries, who it didn't matter if you did that filtering or not, it could cause your SQL Server failovers not to work. That's how bad it was. Now Shane, of course, I'm joking that you're writing it with chat GPT, but we're just having a good old time there. Uh, all right. So, oh, dear, dear uh, Camille uh, said, uh, thanks for your work and good choice on your glasses. I happen to uh, have the same frame. I love these IC Berlins. They're just amazing. I have a bunch of their sunglasses, too. All right. So let's go back and let's try another uh, one of the uh, ideas that y'all had here. Let's see here. Moore said, what are the biggest or longest standing bugs in uh, SQL Server? So let's say... For our title, we'll say top 10 longest standing bug, known bugs in SQL Server. We'll generate the, uh, actually, I'm not even going to generate sections. We're just going to say that the section is the top 10 longest standing known bugs. We'll copy that and paste it in there. And now we'll generate this with, I'm going to say 11 sections or 11 paragraphs uh, per section. And let's see what it comes up with for the list of content. Now, what's going to happen when it comes out of here is it's probably not going to be like a list of connect items because, for example, or now it's called feedback.azure.com. So one of the things that you'll notice in here is it doesn't include links by default. It's not linking to other resourceful, useful information out on the Internet doing things like citing citations. You can, in the final edited version of the post, of course, with this plugin, you can also give it a list of links 
that you want in your post. You can say, I want you to work in a link to this training class or this stored procedure or whatever, which is kind of cool. All right, so let's see what it came up with in terms of bugs. Um, hold on a second here. Let's, let's resize it so that y'all can see. I'm already calling BS on some of these. Number one, the buffer cache behaves differently when the configuration option is changed. What? Come on now. The cache does not rebuild itself. No, this isn't true. When a configuration option is changed, the buffer pool is not supposed to rebuild it. Assuming that you mean by the buffer cache that that means uh, cache data, no, that's never supposed to be true. The plan cache, th that's not true either. When you do a reconfigure, it can change uh, parts of the plan cache or even clear the plan cache, but it's not like it has to go rebuild itself. The query its plans will get built uh, whenever the uh, app queries actually run. SQL Server doesn't proactively build query plans. It only builds them when you run them. Chat, chat, GTBS. The union all query operator uh, returns incorrect results. You are out of your mind. Some users have reported that the operator returns uh, incorrect results when it's using the top keyword. That's because they don't understand order of operations and when the top is applied. That is not a known bug. Failure to compress an failure to compress a table when creating a clustered indexes. So you notice how over and over again, this is like some users, some users, and this has been a known bug. This is just hallucination. That's not even true. Um, as Moore says, maybe we need a, a specific uh, definition of bugs. Bind variables? We don't even use the term bind variables in SQL Server. Memory leak and XML validation. I, I could actually kind of believe that. Um, index usage statistics. Oh, that, that was... Okay, this is just BS. Okay, so this was a bug. There was a bug if you did an alter index rebuild. I mean, I would call it a bug. Kendra called it a bug. Uh, when you did an alter index rebuild, it would clear all the index usage statistics. That was like SQL Server 2012. Microsoft fixed it in like 2014, and they backported it with a service pack too. But the part that's kind of BS is that, however, some users have reported the stats are not updated correctly, leading to suboptimal query performance. Index usage statistics has nothing to do with query performance, has absolutely nothing to do with it. And Frag King, you're absolutely right there in the chat. I worry about that too as well. So this seems like it would be, uh, you know, like at first glance, it's just a bunch of words jumbled together that seems like it would be correct. But especially since there's no links to anything like feedback.azure.com, where there are known bugs and have been known bugs for a long time. This is just a word salad that doesn't really mean anything. So, so far, some of the ways that we've been able to recognize uh, blog posts that created by chat GPT, it's a whole bunch of word salad that doesn't get specific. When you do ask it to get specific, there's not links to underlying truth about the information to, to back up whatever it is that it's saying. Okay, so another thing that I want to talk about while we're in this with this list of content is there are ways that you can make the writing more technical. And this is where the blog post become or where the uh, uh, WordPress plugin is kind of kind of cool. So what this shows right over here, let me move it around so y'all can see it. Content parameters for this WordPress uh, plugin. So here you have what language you want it written in, the writing style, and the writing tone. This is kind of awesome because you can have fun with these. Let's have a little fun. Let DK Kimbo says, can you write in the voice of Brent Ozar? Yes, you can. So let's say for writing style, we're going to say uh, sarcastic. And then for the, or actually for writing style, we'll say technical. And then for writing tone, we'll say sarcastic. And then now let's try the exact same post again. 
for the top 10 longest known uh, uh, standing bugs in SQL Server. Now, I typed in stuff inside there. That is a free text box. You can put in anything that you want. Give it to me in the voice of Brent Ozar. Give it to me in the voice of Kimberly Tripp. Any any uh, person that you want to put inside there. <laughs> Pop the lobster. 10 ways that chat GPT will replace Brent Ozar. So it's been going for like 25 seconds. Um, I will say that the more prolific an author has been, the more accurate the similarity is, like how it's going to write it. So check that out. Now we have a totally different style, even if you just scan the headings. Isn't that nice? Now, I will tell you that most of the times when I see chat GPT written blog posts, because I've already seen them inside the SQL Server community, most of the time when they're doing it, they're leaving it at a neutral writing style, so it has no personality. But you can inject personality into your work uh, by, by uh, throwing in these kinds of keywords. I love this. Why fix it when you can just pretend it doesn't exist? Oh, that's kind of awesome. All right, so I love that. Let's say, and so here's what it's generating too. Since y'all are around technical stuff, um, write an article about whatever the section title was in language. This is written, organized in the following headings. So you see how if I come a little further down inside here, it says style writing tone to uh, and tone or style right uh, and tone we're going to put our own <laughs> bill burr's voice oh my god i love that comedian why do you think that friend it doesn't exist let's say for the tone we'll say in the style of stephen king writing style uh horror horror and then let's come back up and try it again. And I'm only going to do, this time I'm going to do less uh, paragraphs just to make it respond a little bit more quickly. And let's see what happens when Stephen King writes blog posts about uh, SQL Server. Give it a little bit of time there. Mm. Um, which one of you said? Oh, Shane. Shane says apparently chat Brent likes alliteration. I noticed that too, and I absolutely love it. So, oh, that's interesting. So in horror, uh, one of the most perfect is arithmetic overflow. <laughs> this bug still exists. Dude, the arithmetic overflow bug is because you didn't use the right data types inside your T-SQL. I don't know that I would call that a bug. Catastrophic. Data corruption and potential system crashes. Be vigilant. This doesn't seem really horrible to me. It doesn't seem like it's really horrorful. Uh... That doesn't seem uh, very horror. Eh, not quite that good. All right, and there was one other one, one other blog post idea that I liked a lot. I'm going to come back up to the list of, uh, uh, ch -ch 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 oh, it's Restoken. Restoken says, how to migrate from SQL Server to Postgres. I love this. This is such a good example of things that people really want to read. So when I do research, <laughs> When I do research about new topics, trying to decide what it is that I'm going to write about, I got a bunch of SEO tools that I use, search engine optimization tools. Um, when I'm just going, all right, I'm starting from a blank page, what do I write about in the next month? I'll look at SEO tools and say, what is it that people are searching for? Very top tier, like things that people ask for all the time, how to migrate from SQL Server to, uh, sounds goofy, but a Redshift or Oracle, or they, they throw all kinds of crazy things in there. Azure SQL DB compared to Synapse Analytics. Comparing things that don't make any sense. Moving from SQL Server to Postgres is a great example of that. What you would want in a blog post about that would be the kind of length that's required, how long those projects take, uh, the top risks of a project like that, how much you should expect to spend, and so forth. Let's see how ChatGPT does. So let's say, uh, do, 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 how to migrate 
from SQL Server to Postgres. I'm writing in the uh, over in the top right here underneath the chat, just trying to get the uh, <laughs> the terrifying tale of switching to Postgres. I forgot that we still have horror on in the voice of Stephen King. So let's go ahead and fix that. We don't need Stephen King telling us how to migrate. Uh, we'll say writing style will be technical. And for a writing tone, let's uh, see what our options are, just some of the suggestions. Neutral, formal, humorous, informal, inspirational. Oh, Stephen, oh, that's a good, uh, still golf, still garf. I should actually, I should have tried that, but I'll keep going. Um, so it's condescending, uh, factual, scientific. Uh, let's go with scientific. Uh, scientific or journalistic? Let's go uh, scientific. Let's see what happens there. Scientific. Uh, and then let's generate our title again. Generate title. And efficient migration from SQL Server to Postgres. If technical consider. <laughs> Love it. Um, let's try letting it generate the sections at first. The need for efficient migration, technical considerations, key challenges and solutions, best practices. That's actually pretty good. I don't know about part one. I don't know if people are already Googling for it. I don't know that I need part one, but the other three are kind of cool. So I'm going to I'm going to do that. I'm going to rip out part one because I don't really need it. But I love that that it tried to go there and we'll say one, two, three, then I'm going to generate uh, the content. I'm going to start with five paragraphs per section. I mean, realistically, if you were going to uh, write this blog post, you would expect to have a lot more than five paragraphs, but let's just see what it does with five. The other thing that I'm going to put in and I, while it's going and building this stuff is I'm going to put in a section that I want in the in the next round, I'm going to say, typical, uh, project uh, migration process uh, length and cost uh, and we'll so we'll see that on the next round the next time we generate uh, content but so for the first round when we had those three uh, sections oh frag king I'll answer that in a second um, so let's see what it came up with now you'll notice that I asked for five paragraphs and we didn't get five paragraphs <coughs> We only got like one paragraph for each of them, but let's see what it does. First step is to ensure data migration and consistency. Let's uh, go through and read through this. Okay, that's not terrible. It's a bunch of words, but it's not terrible. Um, if I was going to expect to see, let's see here, we'll, we'll break this up a little bit, an essential part, then another critical consideration is user acceptance testing. What it really generated for me is three paragraphs. Now it doesn't really tell me a whole lot. It's just kind of generic. Hey, this is some things to exactly frag King says very generic. Let's go down to see key challenges and solutions. Oh, yeah. Okay, true. Postgres does not support all SQL Server features, which features can't be migrated uh, and alternatives. Uh, modify your applications, update connection strings, use middleware. Oh, my God, no. OK, so this is all kind of true, but it's really generic. There's nothing specific like uh, data types that a list of data types that SQL Server supports that uh, Postgres does not or vice versa. So let's try being a little bit more specific with that in our section headers. Let's say um, we already know what it says for the technical considerations and key challenges. Let's ask for something really uh, 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 challenging. Uh, data types, we'll say SQL Server data types that Postgres doesn't support. Um, SQL Server uh, commands that Postgres doesn't have. <laughs> Master's thesis, exactly. This is how people are passing college courses. Um, and then we'll say top five SQL Server features uh, missing from Postgres. 
All right, and we'll leave in that uh, typical migration process length and cost because I think it's kind of interesting. And let's go see how it generates contents for that. A, a, a good example of things that you don't get out of chat GPT is a table, a table of here's a, a command in Postgres and here, or here's a command in SQL Server. Here's the equivalent command in Postgres. Here's a data type in SQL Server. Here's the equivalent data type in Postgres. So when you don't when you expect to see those kinds of things and you don't see them, that's another good example that you're seeing content that was just churned out by chat GPT. Okay, so let's see top five features missing from SQL Server or missing from Postgres. Number one, query store. Postgres does not have a direct equivalent. That's not true. Postgres has equivalents, but they're just under extensions. It's not built into the product directly. So I'll kind of give it a pass. SQL Server server side tracing and extended events features are not available in Postgres. That's great. That's absolutely true. It's completely true. If your business relied on that, I can see that being a, a useful bullet. Three, Post SQL Server has a graph database with Post Postgres doesn't have. Oh, wait, what? Hold on, I don't believe that. Uh, Postgres graph uh, database. Oh, using SQL Postgres as a graph uh, graph database. Okay. Looks like you can. So, all right, and there are extensions too as well. So I think that that's kind of an outright lie. Um, SQL Server number four, SQL Server has built-in memory, in memory LTP. No one in their right mind should be using that. It's a terrible feature, but that's true. Number five, Polybase. Okay, these are interesting. If I said top five features though, I don't think these are the top five that would really stop you in terms of a migration. So that's kind of goofy. I did skip, where was the data types? Oh, the commands and data types. Oh, beautiful. SQL Server data types that Postgres doesn't support. Oh, unique identifier and UUID are the exact same thing. Decimal and numeric for all practical purposes are the exact same thing. The data types are or the time ones, the very first one. That is true that that's wildly different. What the what? SQL Server's compute and compute by comments? Commands? I don't know what that is. SQL Server Compute By. Compute By? What? Compute By. Compute Aggregate. What? I've never seen that before. Come on. Whoop. They hijacked my back, back one. Compute. It's not computed columns. Compute. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Ah, ha, ha. Uh, I can't execute a compute statement. And if you scroll down, compute clause is no longer supported in SQL Server 2020 12. <laughs> so I was like, no wonder I didn't recognize that. That's just, that's just, that's not even true. What on earth? Uh, pivot and unpivot, that's fair. Uh, and then top is not used in Postgres, limit is used instead. That's true, that's true too. Um, and that is uh, work that you'd have to do in order to rewrite your applications. So that's not bad. Um, typical migra, oh, here's a good word soup. Um, how much does the migration process take? Varies, depends on circumstances based on size, complexity, how deeply ingrained the features are. That's true. On average, it can take up to several months to migrate your database. I actually believe that. I, I think that's probably not that far off. Cost varies. On average, it can cost upwards of tens of thousands of dollars to migrate. Okay, here's the thing. If something takes several months, then it costs a lot more than tens of thousands of dollars. Let's say, just to make things simple, let's say that a DBA salary is $120,000 a year. Lots of people make more, lots of people make less. But the nice thing about $120,000 is it divides out into $10,000 per month. If something takes several months in order to do, let's just say that that means five. Five times $10,000 a month of your salary, $50,000.
it would cost tens of thousands of dollars just for one person's salary during that length of time working on the project. If you have multiple people, and of course you would, including things like developers, this would be hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions of dollars. So that doesn't quite make sense. Overall, you get a rough idea there. So, so far, based on what I've shown you, you're probably like, so far, based on what I've shown you, you're probably like, well, this chat GPT thing is kind of underwhelming. Okay, but let me tell you how I want to use it. So that's true. Bob says it depends on where your developers are based. Absolutely. But then you also have project managers and things like that that are involved with those as well. Um, how I like to use it is brainstorming for things like outlining sections for a blog post or for a training class or for a, uh, a conference session that I want to give. Because what is really useful for is things like uh, write me an introductory abstract for a session or give me the five things you must learn before starting an availability groups project. So let's try something that I think is more suited for chat GPT. I'm going to still be responsible for writing all the technical details, but I might let chat GPT help uh, brainstorm where this is going. So. <laughs> Moore says it feels like a good wireframing tool. I think that's a great way of saying it. I'm like wireframing my blog posts. So let's say, or get your takeaways from something you've already written. Yes, absolutely. Or, or uh, uh, summarize someone else's blog. It's good for that. So let's say stages of a successful always on availability group um, deployment or steps required to deploy uh, always on availability groups. And let's say give me uh, seven sections generate and see what we get. All right, so an introduction, planning for the deployment, preparing the SQL Server environment network, configuring the AG, syncing data between the uh, replicas, implementing HR and DR features. I think that might might even not be needed, or we might move it somewhere else. Testing and monitoring availability groups. That's not bad. That's not terrible. That's pretty good. Where it feels like it falls off the rails is this next button down here generate the content. This is where it starts to just BS because it doesn't really have a whole lot of in depth details. But you know what? What if I just put one or two paragraphs per section? What if I just let it do one or two paragraphs a section and I use those as intros and then I go in and flesh out all the technical details. I go in and flesh out like a bullet point checklist list of uh, everything that I need to teach inside that particular module. Now it's I hit generate on there just to show you where we're at. I hit generate and it's going off and generating that content. Keep in mind that I'm also still in the uh, technical or scientific writing uh, example. Okay, so now let's see what it put in here. And you can kind of think of this as the introduction post uh, or the introduction section for each of your of the in depth things that you're going to put in. Make sure it meets your HA and DR requirements, identify replicas, determine the number. Well, these are kind of backwards. <coughs> After all, what do you mean identify them? If you haven't even figured out how many you want, but you could switch this around. Identify the databases needed to include an AG. That's good. Check the hardware requirements, how much you're going to need. Uh, I don't think, you know, like it's not like you're going to look at the requirements and say that that's whatever Microsoft requires is the bare minimum. That's fine. That's probably wrong. But what I would just say is let's think about the sizes of each replica. That's actually not bad. Uh, preparing the SQL Server environment. Install and configure Windows failover cluster, check your network settings, enable the feature. That's not bad. Some of these I might want to reorder a little, but that's actually pretty good. So if you wanted to write an introductory 101 level post, it would totally work completely fine. I, I don't have a problem with that at all. I might put my spin on it. So I might tell it instead of technical and scientific, I might say technical and let's delete this and go with my other choices. 
Let's try. In the voice of Brent Ozar. And let's see what comes up. Generate content. And let's see what we get. In the experiments that I've seen, I'm like, I've got 20 years of blog posts out there. Um, a lot of it, though, is stuff that's on brentozar.com isn't necessarily stuff that I wrote, uh, because along the way, I've worked with Jeremiah, Kendra, Doug Lane, you know, Eric Darling, all these cool people. Um, so it might kind of uh, mix up the wording a little bit there. Um, there's no humor in this. There's nothing funny inside here. Uh, so or sarcastic for that matter, which makes it makes me think it doesn't know my personal style very well. That's fine, though, because I could say for my writing style, instead of saying uh, in the voice of Brent Ozar, I can say uh, upbeat or cheerful or humorous. We'll try humorous and then say generate content. Morris, that's true. Morris says it's probably because the style is technical. I, instead of doing technical for the next round, let's change that and make that educational, I guess. Informative probably isn't bad. Informative, expository, blog. Oh, let's try blog. It's kind of cool. Um, so there's nothing funny in here still, even though I said humorous. So let's try blog and humorous and try it, because I guess there aren't a lot of uh, humorous scientists out there. I, that's not true. I mean, there are a ton of humorous scientists. It's just that they don't really write in a scientific. Maybe, who's that? Uh, Bill Nye, the science guy. Bill Nye, the science guy, explains availability groups. Um, all right, so let's see here. Now, so we did blog and humorous, and let's see if there's anything in funny inside here. That's not funny at all. Although, to be fair, it is really hard to make always on availability groups funny. It's hard to do anything but uh, but smile but uh, sigh in terms of that. So that, that's not too bad. I'm going to try one last trick. I'm going to say um, a poem about always, about SQL Server. And we're going to say for our writing style, do, 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 do. let's see, is there poetry inside this list? If there isn't, I'm just going to add it. Poetic, poetic, writing style, writing tone. Poetic. Romantic. Oh, that's it. Romantic, romantic love poem about SQL Server. And let's do five paragraphs worth of content. And let's see what happens. Let's see what we get here. Do I have a drum roll button? I used to. I don't anymore. <laughs> okay, now it looks like we just need to, uh, to put line breaks in here. Uh, Oh, that's lovely. Isn't that great? A listener must be created. It's our guide to tell our server data where to reside. Configure it to connect our servers. Our love in sync. Our connection never swerves. Our final steps, creating availability groups with care. Adding databases, our love affair to share. Syncing our data, our love now complete. Always on availability, our passion sweet. In conclusion, our love for SQL Server shines, always on availability, our hearts entwine. Together we shall always be my SQL Server forever with me. I <laughs> gotta say, that's pretty doggone good. That's pretty amusing. So. <laughs> 
hopefully across the span of the last half hour, 45 minutes, you've gotten an example of what it's like to be a writer now armed with the tools of chat GPT. I am a huge fan of the WordPress plugin AIOmatic. Uh, it's like 50 bucks, ballpark US, and it uh, just integrates so well with WordPress that it's really easy to use for creating uh, topic ideas, um, testing out, creating wireframing blog posts was another way that uh, one of y'all put it. Um, you just got to be really careful when you're reading, when you're reading other people's blog posts and you see things that look like word soup, uh, see things that don't get into, into any specifics, don't give you working code examples, don't give you screenshots, don't give you tables, and probably most important, don't link to anything else to give supporting evidence. Those are all good keys that you're looking at something that was just purely written with chat GPT. And I want to make sure that y'all get that because there are already bloggers out in just the SQL Server community that are just pushing stuff out with chat GPT. And I look at it and I'm like, I hope people don't take that seriously because it's dangerous to believe what's inside that post. All right, a little different uh, engagement there for today's uh, office hours. Hope that y'all had fun and learned something. I am now off to, what am I doing today? I guess I have to get back to work. I'm actually writing blog posts, which is the reason why I uh, pulled out that AI-O-Matic. I literally installed it, I think, two, three days ago for the first time. And I was like, oh, this is really cool. I got to show people how this works. Um, but then at the same time, I was kind of like, also, oh, this now I understand why so-and-so is uh, writing uh, that way. Uh, uh, still says, do you think we'll be able to interact with databases through natural language? So about 23 years ago, still you're way too young to remember this. You're young and handsome and attractive and you smell much better than old people like me and Surly Dev. Um, but uh, uh, a long time ago, there was something called English Query where you could literally say, show me uh, all of the salespeople with the top uh, sales results in the last three months for the Florida region, and it would try to build a query to do it. Now, at the time, that technology was n nowhere near ready. We didn't have things like AI, so Microsoft discontinued it in the very next release. It just disappeared. Today, there are already uh, chat G chat DB, I want to say, is one of the open source products that's working to create this, where it has to have a uh, knowledge of your database, and then you can start to use GPT uh, to interact via chat GPT to ask for stuff. But I tell you what, one of the things that looks the coolest to me is there's a product called, I want to say it's notable.ai where you can describe what you want and it creates a notebook for you, like an Azure Data Studio notebook, a Jupyter notebook, uh, with all kinds of charts to help tell your data story and explain the points. It's so young, it's so buggy right now, but it just makes me excited for the potential of working with data. It's absolutely amazing. I also think that it's one of those reasons why being a data professional will continue to grow in value because the easier it is for people to ask for data, the easier it is for these systems to get it wrong and to build it slowly, to build it in a way that doesn't perform and now your database is absolutely getting hammered. I want as many people as possible to be able to write queries with their data because the more people who wrote, <laughs> that's really dumb, the more people who write queries, the more valuable people like me are that, that uh, make queries go faster. Uh, all right, so we'll stop there. I hope that y'all have a fun Thursday and a fun weekend. I believe I'm back here next week because uh, I'm in the I'm in the office for quite a while uh, for the foreseeable future here. Let's take a quick look. Um, next week, yes, next week I'll be back here on Wednesday, Thursday doing office hours again. So I will see y'all then. Adios, folks. <laughs>